कलम गवाह है में आज मुलाकात दक्षिण भारत में सबसे ज्यादा प्रचलित न्यूज़पेपर मलयालम मनोरमा के संपादक और अनेक भाषाओं में छपने वाली मैगजीन किताबों टीवी चैनल और एफएम रेडियो के मालिक मामन मैथ्यू से मामन मैथ्यू का जन्म 20 सितंबर 1944 को मद्रास में हुआ पिता के एम मैथ्यू एडिटर के तौर पर उस वक्त मलयालम मनोरमा को रिवाइव करने में जुटे थे जबकि मां अनम्मा मैथ्यू का रुझान आर्ट और कल्चर की तरफ था मामन मैथ्यू की इनिशियल एजुकेशन एमसीसी सेकेंडरी हाई स्कूल मद्रास से हुई मद्रास क्रिश्चियन कॉलेज से उन्होंने प्री यूनिवर्सिटी की ग्रेजुएशन एंड पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन उन्होंने दिल्ली के सेंट स्टीफन कॉलेज से किया अपनी एजुकेशन कंप्लीट करने के बाद वो कोलंबिया जाकर जर्नलिज्म का कोर्स करना चाहते थे लेकिन फाइनेंशियल कंस्ट्रेंट्स की वजह से उन्हें अपना प्लान ड्रॉप करना पड़ा इसके बाद उन्होंने मलयालम मनोरमा और मुंबई में द टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया में एज ए ट्रेनी काम किया जर्नलिज्म की बारीकियां समझने वो इंग्लैंड के कार्डिफ गए और वेस्टर्न मेल में एज ए ट्रेनी रिपोर्टर काम किया इतनी सारी ट्रेनिंग के बाद जब वो भारत वापस आए तो उन्हें मलयालम मनोरमा के कालीकट के एडिशन का जिम्मा दिया गया जिसे उन्होंने सफलतापूर्वक चलाया 2010 में पिता के एम मैथ्यू के निधन के बाद वो मलयालम मनोरमा के एडिटर इन चीफ बने जिस लगन से उन्होंने इस अपने अखबार को और अपने पूरे पब्लिकेशन का जो उन्होंने इतना बढ़ाया है मामन मैथ्यू इज वन मैं समझता हूँ कि उच्च कोटि के जो हमारे न्यूज़पेपर के ओनर जैसे रामनाथ गोविंदका थे वैसे ही मामन माथिर and uh, he built up a great institution which uh, carries on uh, the legacy uh, he built initially mamun matthew pehle hindustani hain jo reuters news agency ke board mein the wo aaj bhi apne aap ko malayalam manorama ka owner kehne se hichakte hain kyunki wo ab bhi business world se zyada news world mein comfortable hain unki isi lagan ke chalte unhe padma shri aur kesri award se nawaza ja chuka hai मामन मैथ्यू से बातचीत का सिलसिला शुरू कर रहे हैं सीनियर जर्नलिस्ट एंड एडिटर आलोक मेहता मामन जी नमस्कार फर्स्ट आई वुड लाइक टू वांट टू नो फ्रॉम यू द रूट्स ऑफ द मलयालम मनोरमा द ट्रेडिशन फ्रॉम फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल दिस मलयालम मनोरमा वाज फाउंडेड इन 1883 बाय कंडतल वर्गीस मापले a poet he was a poet this was not started as a commercial establishment malayala manorama now to choose the name malayala manorama itself he had he called all the poets of travancore uh tra princely travancore state to come and participate in a brainstorming to name the news the newspaper which he had in mind normally those days there was no system of brainstorming normally a owner says i will name my newspaper so and so many have changed their names many of our name is malayala manorama malayala manorama manorama means Uh, in malayalam we say manasine reme pikwa that means happiness, uh, ha- in mind. happiness of the mind happiness jo kush dete hain man ko uh, that is really the uh, thing now this name was not selected by kandathil vargis mapla it was selected at this brainstorming session by kerala varma valya koi tamburan of the royal family of travancore vilvittath raghavan nambiyar so now after this was uh, uh, malayala manorama was named you have to take royal permission to start so kandathil vargis mapla was a very eminent poet uh, when to the maharaja of uh, travancore and told him that this is what we have started he was so delighted by this name you know that he gave the travancore royal coat of arms that is two elephants and all he gave that 
as a present to Malayala Manorama to be used as our logo. To be used as our logo, in which it says, charity, our household divinity, which means Dharmos Mata Kula Devata. Malayala Manorama was started on, was registered as the first joint stock publishing company in India. In on March 14th, 1888. But for two years delay was there in the actual starting of the press. Starting of the press was, um, of the newspaper was on 1890, March 22nd. Right from day one, he was assisted by K.C. Maman Mapla, who was my grandfather. Khandathil Varghis Mapla's brother's son was K.C. Maman Mapla. He was preparing to sit for the Indian Civil Service Examination. So he told him, being the uncle, you are, you don't, you come and join. From day one, K.C. Maman Mapla was involved with uh, uh, the newspaper from 1890. K.C. Maman Mapla writes about the thrill of the first issue coming up, the ink falling on his hands, how much of, what a thrill it was. He was doing the binding, folding, distribution, and he was a voracious, he had, he had just taken a degree from Madras Christian College and come back to Kerala. You know. So, if you see the line of chief editors of Malayala Manorama, they are all connected with literary. See, I, am, I am the fifth chief editor in 127 years. Maybe I am the person who's got the least amount of lit, I mean, poetic uh, sort of capability. But at that time must be Britishers, how, how Britishers. what was the reaction no, of no, the no, Britishers? First, the very first <laughs> issue of uh, Malayala Manorama, the editorial, was really very revolutionary. It called, Khandathil Varghis Mapla wrote that the free, that children of the Pulaya caste, that is those days what we used to call the, like the Dalits, mm -hmm. should be given education. Those days education was only for the upper class, the princely class. But it should, that was the, imagine what a great editorial to write that education should, should be given to the, you could have written about so many other subjects, but he chose a revolutionary plan. Khandathil Varis Mapla always used to have Kavi Sabhas, Bhasha Poshni yeah. Poetry Sabha, Festival. Poetry so. Festival. Bhasha Poshni is a literary magazine which we've got. So he used to always sit around and have poets and all. But so, he was also active in the politics, in Congress or some... No. Kandathil Varghisma Apla was not involved in politics. My grandfather uh, was in, uh, involved in setting up of the State Congress okay. at that time. And uh, so you must uh, realize his basic interest was to write literature. He used, was a voracious reader. He used to write in Malayalam and in English with equal ease, no problem. Malayalam, he was very good. And when some subjects uh, of, um, were of interest or which upset him, he used to sit and write editorials, that is my grandfather, which were so strong, hard-hitting and at the same time uh, lengthy, explaining both sides. You know. So that's why the Britishers must be annoyed and then they just, you have to stop the publication of the... Uh, I would like to correct you, Alokji. The Britishers had nothing to do with this. Okay. It was actually the Divan of the Travancore uh, Maharaja. I don't want to take his name. I mean, we've forgotten all those 
passed it. Uh, he was from Tamil Nadu. He and my grandfather, they were friends initially. Both were uh, brilliant. It's like diamond cutting diamond. Mm -hmm. Finally, they fell out. And so he must be big... more loyal than the king, what we yes. always say. Yes, he wanted to he was uh, very, British he was very close to the uh, royal family. Mm -hmm. I don't think the royal family as such wanted to. See. There was a firing in incident near Trivandrum at a place called Nayatingara, where uh, some police people of the Maharaja and I think six or seven persons died. We reported it. That evening itself, the Divan sent and closed Malayala Manorama and after some time arrested my grandfather and took him to uh, Trivandrum Jail. In fact, took him to Trivandrum Jail and he found my uh, grandfather to be a little bit of a problem person even in jail that he finally transferred him to Madras Central Jail. He was put into jail when he was over 68 or something and he had health problems and all that those days. But he was a brave. But after independence again you started? No, you no. Know, the independence of India was on August 15th, 1947. Malayala Manorama's independence came only 15 weeks later. We could not report India's independence because we were still proscribed. He took, there was an ins he was still the Divan of Travancore even after independence. And he wanted an independent Travancore, independent of India, oh. independent of Pakistan. And he sent an emissary to Pakistan also, you know, mm -hmm. which my grandfather opposed. So if we, he said, if you agree, he told my uncle K.M. Charyan, who was a professor of history in Madras Christian College, and who became the chief edit, third chief editor of Malayala Manorama, told him, all what your father has to do is to agree to my independent Travancore, and I will uh, give you back your license to print. My grandfather, anyway, he said, born much. Uh, what is it? I'm not going to give up. Uh, so, there was some, an incident, one member of the Revolutionary Socialist Party um, uh, attacked this divan at a function in uh, near Koilon, which is Kollam now, uh, the place is Kollam, and tried to stab him. But the Divan had an armor, so they chopped off his nose. And then his son who was a minister in the a deputy minister of state, a deputy minister in Panditji's government, came and took him back to Tamil Nadu. And we got our license immediately after that. I always found that many of the so-called journalists which we had used to say, Owners are not professionals. I wanted to demolish that theory. Maman Matthew ko Malayalam Manorma ki baagdoor aasani se nahi mili thi. Unhe apne aap ko prove karna pada tha. पहले मलयालम मनोरमा और फिर टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया मुंबई में ट्रेनी जर्नलिस्ट की तरह काम करना पड़ा इसके बाद जब वो कार्डिफ गए तो उन्हें पहले शॉर्ट हैंड सीखनी पड़ी उनके मुताबिक वेस्टर्न मेल के एडिटर जॉन हैम्फ्रिस एक टेररिस्ट की हद तक के हार्ड टास्क मास्टर थे उसके बाद वो संडे मेल के एडिटर हैरल हेवेंस के शागिर्द बने अमेरिका के ओकला के पेपर में काम करते वक्त उन्होंने लोकल रिपोर्टिंग की बारीकियाँ सीखी लेकिन इन सभी अनुभवों को मामन मैथ्यू काफी इंपॉर्टेंट पाते हैं क्योंकि जब कालीकट एडिशन का काम उन्हें सौंपा गया तो उनके लिए कुछ भी नामुमकिन नहीं था एडिटर इन चीफ के तौर पर अब वो भले ही ग्राउंड रिपोर्टिंग नहीं कर पाते हो लेकिन अपने रिपोर्टर्स के जरिए वो सारी जानकारी बटोरते हैं और एडिटोरियल लिखते हैं उनकी रिपोर्टिंग की हाईलाइट था पाकिस्तान के पूर्व तानाशाह जनरल जियाउल हक से उनका इंटरव्यू 
कि बहुत ही ऊंचे दर्जे का जर्नलिस्ट और न्यूज़पेपर के मालिक और बहुत ही कामयाब न्यूज़पेपर। I think he was gentle and firm, and these are qualities which are greatly to be admired, I think. एडिटर इन चीफ और एमडी होने के नाते मामन मैथ्यू को जर्नलिस्टिक और मैनेजेरियल दोनों जिम्मेदारियां निभानी पड़ती हैं लेकिन आज भी उनके एडिटोरियल्स में ग्राउंड रियलिटी कल्चरल बैकग्राउंड और सब्जेक्ट पर उनकी बेहतरीन पकड़ दिखाई देती है वो कल्चर और लिटरेचर का काफी ख्याल रखते हैं एक सब्जेक्ट जिस पर वो बड़े पैशनेटली लिखते हैं वो है फ्रीडम ऑफ प्रेस और फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच और इस फ्रीडम को वो अपने एडिटर्स और रिपोर्टर्स को भी देते हैं मामन जी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग विच आई वॉन्टेड टू नो अबाउट यू इन द एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी टू यू ज्वाइन एज ए रिपोर्टर इंस्टेड ऑफ बिकमिंग ए लाइक ए डायनेस्टी नॉर्मली वट हैपन इन द बिजनेस हाउसेज आर द मीडिया हाउस दे जस्ट सन कम एंड टेक ओवर एज एटर आर द मैनेजर एंड जनरल मैनेजर एंड दे स्टार्ट वर्किंग हाउ यू कम इन पिक्चर एंड स्टार्ट एज ए रिपोर्टर इन डेली टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया देन वेन टू ब्रिटेन अमेरिका टू वर्क हार्ड सी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल I always found that many of the so-called journalists which we had used to say, "Owners are not professionals." Yeah. I wanted to demolish that theory. First and foremost, I said, "Why can't what what prevents an owner from becoming professional?" So I thought the first thing which should happen to me is I should get. I mean, at the various discussions and all, I've heard people say, "Oh, uh, you don't have a degree. You don't have this thing. You don't have. Uh, you're not. You can't. You can't write." So I asked my father, "Can I go to Columbia University?" He said, "I don't have." A, but he said, "I'll get you job." Okay. First, he got me a job. Uh, after my MA, I worked for in, in a Malala Manorama Delhi bureau for also for some time, and um, after that, see, uh, I went and joined as a trainee uh, journalist in Times of India, Bombay. Oh. Times of India, Bombay, and for me. All the time behind my back, I must prove myself as a journalist first and foremost. I feel that I have a very strong language skill to write, to communicate, and to make other people understand what I am writing. Some people write a lot of bombastic things. I know how to write to a person of eighth standard and make them understand. I don't go for very high. Food. Main thing is so. I sat. I knew very well that Malala Manorama is there, but I sat and started right from the beginning till the end to learn journalism. The the traits I learned: newspaper law, art of writing. Uh, page layout, and when I was at Times of India, we used to bring out a lab paper called Training Times. I Training Times, each of the trainees is given a chance to be the editor to the thing. Lab paper to do bring up the lab paper, do everything. You have to do everything from writing the headlines to. I was fortunate. to uh be the editor twice which uh i felt was one of the first times when i felt that listen there is if you work hard if you are dedicated you can see malala manorama it was still a very we had only about 100000 1 lakh circulation at the time So I said, my ambition was to be a professional journalist and be a benevolent, what do you say, owner also. 
I felt that content is king. I have had an argument with the advertisement manager of our own office in Malayala Manorama once. He was encroaching into editorial space. Not the present person, person before. He was encroaching into editorial space with advertisement. I said, no, you should not do it. So he said, no, you have employed me to get advertisement. I said, I again said, no. Then he suddenly turned around, whose side are you on? So I said, maybe it's my youth and all that, you know. I said, definitely not on your side. I'm on the side of the editorial. This is the tradition of the like the British press, like because you worked also in the London Times. Yes, with, I, uh, Sunday I, Times. Yeah, after Times that. Uh, so I decided to be a working journalist. I decided because working journalists used to say, "Malik to kabi professional ne ho sakte hain." Yeah. I to bola ne, hum prove karenge. I swam. Work करके prove करेंगे कि मालिक नहीं है जिसको भी hard work professional journalist कर achieve कर सकते हैं. There are certain principles to journalism. If you apply it properly, the right formula, it's right. Learn right in simple language. But you have so many editions and uh, large yeah, circulation. Yeah, but, but how you come, because the three generations, no? yeah. uh, three generations read the newspapers. You are very rightly said yeah. that even in this digital age, yeah. people, young generation also want to read Malayana Marma yeah. and their father, their mother. So how you uh, do justice with all these? Uh, because you said the content is the king. Yeah. But to fulfill the ambitions or the expectation from the readers, See, one, one thing which I set up when I came back, when I had two weeks, that time we didn't even have a news editor when I came back. We didn't have a news editor. One person every evening would sit and then he'll be the copy taster or some name. My father, like me, used to go and learn sitting in lectures, classes. Then he went to Columbia University for three months on an exchange program to learn journalism. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he managed to, he used to be actively involved in the Press Institute of India. He used to go and listen to uh, Harold Evans speaking, Amitabha, Chakravarti, all those old people in Press Institute, Chanchal, Chanchal Sahib, And he was responsible for setting up the Asian Press Institute also. Mm -hmm. He used to attend as a student. And at the same time, he started teaching journalism also. So when I came back, I said, we will be taking, we will start a training scheme, which I got the idea from Times of India and from my experience overseas. So we have Every year, we take two, three batches of this. We appointed a person, editorial director, who was our editorial writer. We made him director of uh, TKG Nair was the first one. Now, Mr. Ubaidullah is our, uh, our... We have a three-hour written test with false numbers given and there is central valuation. So even if I want to get my own son in, I will not be able to... Mamanji, I just want to... Because this in Kerala, it is very difficult because you have communist, you have Congress, and the communal force is also very strong there. Yeah. How you have to adjust with these people and you have to must be have... As a resident writer or in a large circulation, you must be having more threats nowadays and earlier also. What kind of political pressure you... See, it is true that we had some problems initially 
with the left, uh, the Marx, Marxist Communist Party. Because we feel that democracy, parliamentary democracy, rule of law, all these are paramount for a country. We had problem. They have attacked our presses. Mr. Under Mr. Nambudri Pad's time, we attacked our presses. Oh. They have taken away our cameras, which we still have not got back. And all. But those days have uh, all gone, you know. They have realized that we are not attacking anybody. We used to, at one point, be known as a Congress paper. Yeah. And we were, we learnt it the bitter way. In 1960, election or something, we put the old Congress symbol on the page one, showed how to vote for the Congress. Oh. I had not come in to the newspaper at that time. I told our editorial colleague, this is suicidal, and that, that as, uh, assembly elections in Kerala, the Congress party got the lowest amount ever in the history of Kerala party. Nine seats only. Basha Boshni was started by a founder and that time it had only 10,000, 12,000 copies. It is still got only 12,000 copies. But that is 12,000 uh, dedicated, committed readers of it. Still 12,000 only. I think uh, a good journalist, a good editor, should listen to everybody, to all political, from uh, the minority communal, uh, communal forces, to the majority, everything we must listen.